I didn't realize they had a new album last year. <laughs> and guess what? This oh man, this would have made the list. Oh wow, it's on the list. All right, I'm fucking. I'm Ret- retroactively kicking something off. Welcome to Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael Mansour, and I'm joined, as always, by my trusty, handy, happy co-host, Alexander Volt. Say hello. Hello. This is Every Album Ever, the podcast where we listen to every single album in the world, one artist at a time. Well, usually we do discography, but sometimes we do a discography, and the band continues to release music, forcing us to tie up some loose ends. Yes, and we knew this was going to happen with the Melvins. Yes, <laughs> we have we did three episodes on the Melvins. Check out all of those. They were all some of the funnest episodes that we've done. That's one of our favorite bands ever. And we knew they were never going to stop putting out albums. Nope. Yeah, and, and uh, so today we'll be talking about their album that came out last year, Bad Mood Rising. Bad Mood Rising. I kept misreading it as Bad Moon Rising yes. up until this very moment. I didn't realize it was mood uh, because I'm a moron. And now I'm glad because I hated... I like, Why would you name it Bad Moon Rising? It's both the Creedence song and the Sonic Youth album. Mm. Uh, and they didn't because they're smarter than I am. And this is, this is great. We missed this last year. It wasn't on either of our lists. Did you even hear it? Yes, I heard it. I didn't hear it. I was I was shocked when you told me that. I didn't realize they had a new album last year. <laughs> and guess what? I'm fucking livid. This oh man, this would have made the list. Oh wow, I love this album. Wow, this it's on the list. All right, I'm fucking I'm Ret- retroactively kicking something off. Like yeah. this this is up. I fucking love this. Is one of my favorite albums from this whole more modern Melvin's era. Goddamn, love it. Um, I I think it's a, a fine Melvin's album. It's just a fine album. It's just a fine album, Alex. Yeah, I like it. It's the Melvin's, uh, but didn't uh, didn't uh, didn't rock my socks off the way other things have. I think it rocked my socks, and like it, it, I was expecting just to, to be you know just to like it because. Even if you don't love a Melvin's album, there's nothing wrong with it. There's always something like, all right, that was, that was, I didn't expect him to, to do that weird mm-hmm. thing. There's always something to be had. And the, the album they put out before this, what is it, Working with God? I think it's Working with God or Working yeah, with God. Yeah, I think technically is the acoustic one, but if you want to do original material. That's right. Five Legged Dog. Yeah. The, yeah, the most. But uh, original material, yeah, working with God, where they did silly things like cover the beach boys, I get around, like changed it to I fuck around. I fuck around. That's right. That was the opener. It was super fun. <laughs> I can't we yeah, working with. I kept. I was trying to remember if it was God's or God. Um, yeah, uh, one of the most charming covers ever, and that's how they opened the album. Yeah. But uh, overall, that album was like one of the silliest, if not their silliest album ever, mm-hmm. which is like. All right, that's fun, but it's also like not like I'm not I don't love it like that. Here is back to ugh, it's just so fucking diverse. Like every song is is wildly different. And I wasn't so when I first listened to this, I think I was like cooking or something, and the opening track, uh, Mr. Dog is totally right. I I had no idea that it was 14 fucking minutes. It's a big song. It just flew by yeah. i love that song so much i yeah. couldn't believe it was that long when i when i checked like uh it's it's bizarre it's a bizarre track it opens up with these pounding toms and reverse buzz vocals yes and then the f- this first main riff is super strange um and it's coupled with you know like the big layered harmony harmonized vocals that they they've been doing for the past decade or so but when this, these guitar leads come in in that first main section, yeah. I'm in love. Truly bizarre, unique guitar lines. I have never heard those before. Yeah, it did make me think of like a senile animal era. Oh, did which it? Which makes me feel old saying that because that is still New Melvin. <laughs> new Melvin, but it was it. That was 20. 20- 13 wasn't it no 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 like 2007 or 2008 or something right yeah it's, it's, oh that's not good been, we're it's been a while that's a long time ago i can't imagine how like day one or 90s melvin's fans feel <laughs> that's true jesus christ uh but it's like a really really bizarre guitar line like there's, there's really no comparison it, it's not like um it doesn't feel like nonsense random notes mm-hmm. it feels like like a just a distinct uneasy 
weird melody just unlike any other it, it it's fast it's fascinating that, that they can still make those this late in their career i i do like that the song is three distinctive sections like yeah. you said the the rhythmic toms with the backwards vocals then we get the the main chunk of the song and then towards the end we go into a more psychedelic jammy around uh yeah it fades out and bleeds into to more toms uh and then that's when like the next song essentially starts mm -hmm. next big section um around five minutes in this fucking killer octave bass comes in i think steve mcdonald is using an octave pedal on his bass on a lot of this album which yeah. is like that's wild, dude. I mean, a bass is already an octave guitar, essentially. Have you seen him? He is the definition of a, a wild dude. He's so fun. I mean, he loves Steve McDonald. God damn, he's great. And we just covered Red Cross. So there we go. Uh, I'm sure I talked plenty about how I love him there. But, uh, it, I mean, it just fucking kicks so much ass. So it has this, this really great bass line with this super unusual octave sound to it. And then... Uh, the the vocals and backup harmonies complement it really nicely. It's like it's like a nice um, light melody over this mean kick ass bass line, and then and around twelve minutes, it goes into another thing, a, yeah. a completely different, absolutely awesome riff. A uh, really ringy guitars with an uncharacteristically moody bass line. Mm -hmm. Like when we when you think of Melvin's riffs, you think of like like the 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 pissed off, the angry, the proggy, um, the really um, in, um, like lined up or synced up perfectly with drum hits. You do a was, lot of like do 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 like a, like everything's synced up. But here it's this really like dark, moody bass line. Um, yeah, and it just it's it's a really well rounded. Like the the song itself could be like an EP. It really the could. one song really could. And that's just the opening track. That's just that's just the opening track. And there's more. And I like every other song almost as much. Uh, some, I, some more. I do like that. Um, that one, you know, is this like fourteen minute epic that kind of has some some ebb and flow to it. And then the f next track, "Never Say You're Sorry," is very mechanical, very machine like, without you know turning into an indu an industrial song. Yeah, it's very heavy, very satisfying. You know, it's, uh, it's almost tribal sounding in the beginning yes. with the drums uh, and recurring throughout the whole song, mostly in the verse, I believe it's this really like almost synthy guitar line. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it could be a synth. I think it's a guitar, but again, like little, little layers that just shape the song in a way that's in a way you wouldn't normally have expected or in a way you, you wouldn't have thought of yourself. Uh, good song. I would never think of one minute of the Melvin's career by myself. <laughs> it's, to be fair, though, it's <laughs> there. Are, there are a special, special couple guys. Uh, the opening riff to it won't or it might sounds a whole lot like "Am I Evil" from mm. Diamond Head, Metallica, whatever. Um, that is that is funny because it does get like slowy. It's on oh, this. Adding why at the, it does get like slow and dreamy, uh, yeah, despite it, having the "Am I Evil" the hard rock and angry yeah. metal rip. Yeah, it it the song the rest of the song is deceptively and anth uh, anth anthemic and melodic. Mm -hmm. uh, the the chorus for it comes out of nowhere, which is big and and satisfying, uh, heavy on the vocal harmonies and like all oh, very jubilant sounding and, <laughs> and pretty, uh, very dreamy, like you said. Uh, Around three minutes in, these vocal harmonies are insanely dreamy. Uh, and it, like, yeah, it just sets you up for one thing and then just completely goes in a different direction. Uh, it's, fuck, it's fucking fantastic. Um, talking about wild choices, let me skip over to the end here because also there aren't that many songs. No, there's only a handful. Uh, the Receiver and the Empire State. Yep. Oh my God. Doing like Congo drums. Yep. Over guitars that sound like ambulance horns is just 
one of the craziest things you'll ever hear. It's so great. That that percussion sounds so good, coupled with these these evil ass Melvin's riffs. Also, oh, I, God. I don't know if I can point to another Melvin's song that has like Congo drums. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like they've been around for so long. They have this is like their twenty second album or something. I feel like it's got to be twenty well, well, second. Main line, okay. Uh, Melvin, like there's more collab albums, and then of course the EPs. But uh, the, the, it's, it's still like, oh, I guess they haven't used that thing before, yeah. And now they have, yeah. There's always just a a, a new thing added, <laughs> uh, and that song it's like, um, it's a interesting closer because it doesn't feel like a closer. Um, it doesn't really end the album in a really like, um, you know, storybook kind of way where it wraps it up nicely, just sort of ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it doesn't feel like any of the other songs. It, it, it's, it's like the most aggressive pissed off out of all of them. There, uh, I think, yeah. Oh, good bookends on this album. I would say. Yeah. And, uh, was it a, my, my discomfort is radiant, which what, is a great song. title. Gr- it is. <laughs> uh, there's more, uh, what sounds like an octave pedal on the bass on that one. And it's something oddly satisfying about hearing these really catchy, almost happy riffs played so brutally and heavy and beefy. I, yeah. I was going to say, you know, a lot of Melvins are heavy and punishing, but you know, they do have these like bright, cheerful moments. And it's funny that, you know, a song called my discomfort is radiant. We're like, yeah, that's, that's yeah. the happy one. Yeah. And the, they they legitimately get, it's not like happy for Sludge Metal. It's like, no, this is a happy, like yeah. happy songs. Uh, it, it's always fucking cool. I don't know. Uh, God damn it. I just love this guy. Um, Hammering is, is, is the last track that we haven't spoke about too much. Um, that, those are some like wacky backing vocals on that. Oh, I mean, that's like Kiss style hard rock. There's like interesting, like, I don't even know exactly what instrument it is. So I'll just call it percussion on there. Uh, very, very interesting. Yeah. It's like, it starts out as this, this kiss kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Very fun, very fun, straightforward riff riffage. Uh, but then it takes a turn toward Melvin's Melvinsville. Uh, it feels great. It works great. And yeah, the, I was just delighted by this. Like, God <laughs> damn. I mean, still angry that I didn't hear it last year. Like I, that's, I feel like I feel cheated that I fucked myself out of that one. I didn't even bring it up to you because I was like, of course he knows. I don't have, I sh- Yeah. I don't have to tell him about it. He knows. He knows. I think I saw it and I thought, I didn't think it was like an album album. I thought it was like either oh, a, a okay. single or something else. Maybe, uh, maybe a live. I, live album. I think I, th- you know what I, Probably because I'm fucking retarded. You know yeah. what I think happened? What's that? I think I saw the name, read it as Bad Moon Rising, mm. thought it had like covers on it, oh, thought it okay. wasn't like a full album, maybe an EP with with that cover on it and something some other stuff, uh-huh. and glossed over it. And it's oh god damn it, it, it is I love it. I, it's a great fucking album. I think yeah, it's one of my favorite from this this whole era. I'm just like I'm a Melvin's fan, so of course I like this album. Yeah, but uh, other things. This a uh, good solid comfort food for me yeah uh i don't know if it felt more consistent for me mm-hmm. than that like i don't know it just, it just felt it's just scratched an itch it's just my... so insanely consistent like, yeah uh and inconsistent while still being uh unexpected and and kind of wacky at times in melvin z or just they'll do a silly thing here mm-hmm. they're the kings of what they do they do it at minimum, they do it consistently, and then if you're like Mike for this album, they do it at a high level when it's real good. They they have earned over the course of <sighs> however many years, they've earned the right to just put out some stinkers, and they they don't. Yeah. God damn! Like, I mean, a few, but yeah. But, but I mean, like, uh, maybe in the past 10 years, how many bad albums are there? Oh, like, yeah. It's yeah. Like, like I said, at at worst, it's a, it's a solid album. Yeah. Like <sighs> the, the one that they did with the Butthole Surfers is just like, uh, I wasn't expecting too much from that album, but. Uh, hold it in. Hold it in. Yeah. yeah. That was the best from that whole episode. I mean, that, that album fucking rips. Yeah, it does. Yeah, if this was if this album was included in that episode, it it might get a personal favorite. I think, 
I think the last album that I like really like liked was Bases Loaded. Oh, okay. And then uh, Walk with Love and Death is you know, I love. I mean the 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 love side or the death yeah. side. I forget which side is the one that I, that I liked a, a lot more. The one that's not noise. That yeah, it's probably love. Love is. Mm. You know what? I'm not gonna. Not, I don't remember. I'm not gonna. Um, I uh, also because we got some time. I stumbled across a copy of the Pincus Abortion Technique vinyl. Tenish, technician. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Stumbled across a copy of that in the wild. Oh, really? I was like, "What do you? What do you guys? A hundred? Mm, no, I don't want it that bad." How much? One twenty. <gasps> why is it is it that assuming, hard to find I, yeah, i'm assuming they didn't do a lot of runs jesus christ i mean that is actually i think my least favorite album of that whole era so i'm okay passing on that one no i will i will buy melvin's albums i don't like just to complete the collection do you have all the albums no how many not, don't you have of like of the ones that we covered i don't have um a lot I would say from like senile animal forward, I have the most mm. senile animal backwards. I have the least because uh, though a few of those albums were trapped on Atlantic for a long time. Oh, yeah. And a few years ago, they did the reissues. I was like, I should get them. And I this. Oh, you didn't? You, so you, you didn't bother getting stag on LP? I want it. Let, let me tell you, <laughs> I want a lot of things on album, on record, but uh, I'm I'm one man with a very minimal income. I do my best. That is a pretty expensive hobby. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a pretty fucked up expensive hobby. I, I saw a meme where it's like, oh, you must think I'm rich because of my uh, vinyl collection. Let me reassure you, I'm this really irresponsible with my money. There it is. There it is. I mean, that can be said about any any collecting any, hobby. Yeah, and I have a few of them. So, uh. <laughs> dude, I, I mean, for a, a second, I was getting really into cameras. I'm like, I can't afford this one. Yeah, this one goes into the tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. I will watch videos on them, but I'm not <laughs> going to. Yeah, you just. I think yeah, if you're passionate about something, you just want the best or all of it, and then it's yeah. The, there's only unless you're rich, only yeah. so much you can do. do I try to get into hobbies that will help me produce something. Mm -hmm. So like the next one, and I'm not even that into it. I'm trying to get into it is mics. So I can understand mics better. Oh, nice. Um, like Mi mic on mics, mic on mics. Uh, and, and how to like, uh, which ones to, that would be best for my current, you know, my current rig. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it, it, I have a very bassy guitar and it's, it's whenever I look up, it's either like best mics for micing up a, a, a guitar amp or a bass amp. It's like, what if your guitar s sounds like a bass, Yeah, but it has all the things that a guitar has? Well, what if you, that you got to think there's like, no answers for that much, much like your sweater. You got to think outside the bun. Gotta think, exactly. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, there's no uh well let me just try this out and see if it works it's like i gotta spend 500 dollars on a mic and then maybe it'll sound good isn't it isn't it so crazy like at guitar center they'll just let like any asshole play any guitar but like everything else it's like i don't know fucking you gotta buy it yeah you should you should be allowed to test mics like uh bring it home sign a waiver uh, if it's damaged, yeah. you pay for it. If you don't bring it back, you pay for it or something. Or maybe they have like a mic that like, oh, you know what? I think what the issue would be with people, maybe a rental, because then I feel like people would rent them or well, just take them and use them for recording. And then not that's why I try to, I mean, because I, I'm no, I'm no businessman or nothing, sure. but maybe, uh, you know, a, a 24 hour thing. You could do a lot in 24 hours. You could do a lot. You could do a lot in 24 yeah. hours. You know what? I, fine six hours you could do a lot in six hours you do a lot in six <laughs> hours no no not as much actually you can do a lot in six hours but a lot of that is setting up in a gain staging wherever the fuck sure. uh unless you're like a fucking pro and you just you know turn it out in which case what's the harm yeah yeah uh there's a better way goddamn there's a fucking better way because that's a really 
hefty investment to just try it out for sure. I'm sure there's places that, that rent them out, but there's not, they're not, they're not um, ubiquitous enough for me to know any at the top of my head, mm-hmm. which is probably saying something. Also, when I found the Pincus abortion technician album, they had a uh, Mr. Bungle album on sale. Oh, and uh, I didn't I didn't even look at I should have. And it was a live album. I was kind of bummed, but I was like finding records on sale these days. is Yeah, it's a very it's a hot it's a hot hobby yeah so i was like uh whatever i supported a band i liked i'm That's, not the biggest fan of live albums but the, it is the intent it feels good though yeah if you, even if you're not gonna like listen to the fucking thing over and over again also i didn't even know they had a live album it's a very cool cover um the i think they <laughs> advertised it as like a virtual concert experience oh that one i saw yeah. them posting about it a lot i'm like <laughs> i'm so confused but okay this has a video aspect to it right i think the yeah maybe i haven't looked into it i just bought it saw it was a live album and it, then it's um, the current it's the current bungle lineup right it, yeah yeah i and, believe the uh it was during covid they did it like a show to no one but it was like really well produced and shot with like okay. good cameras and, and they, they put it on sale streaming for like a limited time see yeah i'd be more interested in like the the video aspect of it but maybe yeah. maybe it came with like a blu-ray and i'm just too stupid and didn't notice it yet possible or maybe a, a code to a link or something something to that and i'm just too dumb to find it you know what you should continue with that and not check yeah don't it's, even bother it's gonna sit on my shelf and i'll never i'll never know never even listen to it no i'm gonna <laughs> listen to it i uh i did end up getting five-legged dog though oh did you because that's a big fucking re- that's a big old baby they sold it at a very affordable price for I think it's three, three records. Okay. I thought it was going to be four, but three, you know what? It might be either way. They sold it at a very affordable price. Like a, like a single records, like 30, 30 fucking dollars. Yeah. That's, that's insane. I think five legged dog was 50. So all right, that's fair. That is fair. And it's also awesome. It's so, it's so fun. It has, and again, I liked it. Just didn't like it as much as, yeah, yeah. something I don't know if, if I'm charmed enough, I can be charmed. Yeah. I mean, I'm, if you, if you charm me, I can, I'll do anything. I'll do things. I, I'll regret <laughs> unspeakable acts, horrific acts. But yeah, there's something about, about that album. It's like, it's not just an acoustic album. It's an acoustic album with so much care to, to so much of their, their catalog. Mm-hmm. It's like songs you would, cause like they're not like a hit band, obviously, but they didn't, they went for songs that you never even like, holy shit. Yeah. That, that weird little song on that album that I hadn't, haven't heard in 10 years. Yeah. It's like, they just picked up like a, just a shit ton of random <laughs> ass songs and then made them acoustic. And it's fucking great. It works. Uh, it's, it's a good listen. Hell yeah. If you haven't heard it, if you, if you haven't heard it and you were a fan of the Melvins, I understand, but it's, I don't, but it's just hard to believe <laughs> yes. because it happened to me, but it's like, fucking listen to it i don't know what to tell you man yeah it's you know what you're getting uh but you also don't know what you're getting there's little little surprises uh solid for me amazing for mike yeah because there's like a lot of things that they do where they'll try a goofy thing and then like we're gonna put a bunch of happy vocal harmonies here and it's gonna be it's gonna come out of nowhere and it's gonna be weird and it's like oh that was kind of kooky and strange and it's interesting but i don't love it Every time they try it on this album, I think it, I think it lands perfectly. It, in a way, it is the the Melvins in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you like it, you like this album. Yeah. Hell yeah! So check that out. There should be a link to it in the description. And if there isn't, then find it. It's not hard to find. Um, also, uh, uh, Buzz's wife Mackie did the, the cover for this one, like many of their albums. They did. There's like a limited run of this one with a different cover that's actually. I think much better. Yeah. Like significantly better. I agree. <laughs> God I agree. damn. That's, that's a fucking great cover. I wish they, they went with that one. Um, oh, dude, Tom Hazelmeyer did that, did this cover. Yeah. He yeah. did the, no offense to Mackie, but fucking holy shit. Yeah. Tom, uh, Tom Hazelmeyer did the, this other cover and it's a uh, dude fucking rules. He has. Yeah. Very interesting art. Yeah. It's uh, it almost reminds me of like that rat thing style. 
Yeah, um, I'm I'm too exhausted to play the limited edition album game these days. But uh, I'm oh, s- I'm stoked for you know people who still do. But uh, yeah, the limited edition shit is pretty. I, if you thought vinyl collecting was expensive and time consuming, that is ridiculous. Yeah, I used I used to be better about it, but I just I don't care if it uh, if it's good and I can get a copy i'm i'm okay with that now yeah i think that's i think it's more than enough yeah uh but thank you so much for listening and watching uh if you want to hang out with us further leave some comments talk some shit to us subscribe like the video blah 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 uh you can follow me on all social media at pander monkey and alex on instagram at every album alex hell yes be please please follow our history guy tom osman uh, who does all kinds of dirt digging for us, improves the show, fucking gets interviews, does all kinds of shit that we, frankly, are incapable of doing. Uh, TomOsmondSounds.com for all things music and TomOsmond.Substack.com for all his interviews and uh, writings about music. Uh, he also just put out a new album with Existent Non-Existent called Industrial State of Mind, which is disturbing, and you can find that in the description. While you're at it, please check out my debut EP, Pander Monkey, and that's in the description as well. Thank you. And of course, patreon.com slash every album ever. That's where you go. Bonus episodes. Uh, you get more loose. Actually, the day. Th- no, no. We're going to be putting a, a loose ends for the main feed. But at the same time, patrons will be getting an exclusive loose ends that's going to stay on Patreon. Um, There's no reason to put this out into the world. No. And, and we're going to be putting we'll put some of those loose ends on the main feed every once in a while. But uh, a lot of them are just going to stay there permanently. Um, it's fun. It's fun that way, I guess. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, you could also join our Discord and be a part of our community and suggest our EAE singles episodes. And if you're tier two, then you can suggest a full ass discography, at least for the time being, while we can still manage them. Uh, those take a lot longer to do, a lot more work is involved, but that's where you go for that. You can also vote on polls and see our schedule in advance and all neat stuff. So go there, do that, please, and thank you. And I believe that about wraps it up, and if we're yep. going to end it with a song. That would be your choice. Shit. Well, you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, short and sweet, let's just okay. do the receiver in the Empire State. Perfect. Hell yeah. So thank you so much for listening and watching. See ya.